G'day guys. So today's video is part six of the CY Models Edge 540 series. So if you're new to the channel or you just happen to stumble across this video, this is a series of videos where I am going about rebuilding slash refurbishing a CY Models Edge 540 model aeroplane. So in this video, I'm hoping it's a long shot, but I'm hoping that this might be the last video or at the very least the second last video of this series. So what we're going to look at is I'm going to try in this video to get the engine mounted and have the rest of all the electronics uh, installed. So why don't we just go have a quick look at the aircraft so far and we'll continue from there. All right, so here it is guys. So this is the, my Edge 540. So for those of you who are new and just stumbled across this video or new to the channel, this model airplane was given to me by a mate of mine. Uh, he uh, bought it uh, second hand and had all intentions of getting it up and running and flying it however that never eventuated so he just gave it to me um, the fella he got it from had built it put all the electronics and the engine in uh, but never flew it and did some weird things in the build so I've been going over it um, changing things and making some things a bit better so in this video what I intend well what I want to try and do is get the engine installed and we have a look in here I have I have most of the electronics in so I have the receiver installed, I have the um, rudder servo installed, I've got the throttle servo installed. Up here I have the receiver and ignition batteries installed. Um, down in here, can't see it, I have the, this is the remote kill switch for the engine because uh, I am using a petrol or gasoline engine instead of a glow engine so if for some reason uh, I have say a the throttle servo fails I can flick a switch and it will cut the ignition to the engine so what I aim to do here is to like I said hopefully have the engine installed and have the rest of the electronics installed so what i might try and do first is get the uh, elevator servos installed and the aileron servos installed on the wings and we'll continue from there all right so i have uh, the two servos for the elevator or the elevator control surfaces um, what I need to do is also I need to make uh, some extension leads so I have uh, the wire and the connectors to make the leads also one thing uh, I will also recommend is some heat shrink tubing now you're probably wondering why we need uh, heat shrink tubing now there are, because I am uh, making the extension lead, it obviously has to, the extension has to plug into the servo, then make its all way along inside the fuselage into the receiver. Now, with model aircraft, and especially something of this size, you want to take as many precautions as possible to prevent uh, a failure of some kind whether it be mechanical electronic and so by having uh, what would 
what I'll do, and I'll show it to you once I've done it, is with the uh, plugs connected, so this the servo plug to the extension lead, we put the um, put the shrink tubing over the uh, connection and then shrink it down and then what that will do is that will make it secure and, pre and prevent any um, mid-air unplugging I guess you could say and there you can do it that way with the heat shrink tubing or you can get uh, do I have I don't I don't have them on on here at the moment but you can get servo plug clips which it's the same sort of thing that goes over the connection and holds the connection together um, but since this is going to be a permanent thing um, heat shrink tubing will do so what I'm going to do is I'll do this off camera um, make the extension wires and then we'll get on with the installation of it alright so I have done one servo uh, extension lead um, I'm going to do the other one off camera obviously like I did with this one so as you see it's all done now if one of the things I do recommend that you do um, especially before you start putting uh, heat, like heat shrink on the connector here is if you um, you don't necessarily need to have it but it it helps because it saves plugging and unplugging on of your receiver um, have a servo tester sorry for the lights a bit bright there um, but have you have a servo tester hooked up so you have your extension lead into the tester and then you can test it just to see if it works so I'm just so I'm just pushing the button here but now uh, so it's on this uh, cycle mode but as you can see the servo is working perfectly so that way we know that the connection is good there's no uh, issues um, when you're doing it though so while it's on cycle mode there you know move the wire around a little bit just to see if it's um, cutting out because while it might be working as it is and you're not touching it um, especially with a big engine on a model like this the vibrations could cause issues so test it all before you install it so what I'm going to do now guys is I'm going to put some heat shrink over the um, connection I'll do the other lead after that off camera and I'll be back all right so I have done both uh, leads um i've also tested them uh, with the servo tester and i have one installed now i will do that obviously i'll do the other one off camera i mean it's a bit fair bit of faffing about um but um i wanted to have obviously like i can always buy extension uh, leads however i wanted them to be a certain length and part of the reason is, is as you can see, this is the wire and this is the uh, rudder servo and it's a pull-pull system. So you have, uh, probably, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you've got the two wires going down uh, the back of the fuselage there. So the reason why I wanted the extension leads a certain length is so that way um, as it goes... I'm not sure if you can see but it goes it goes as the servo pokes through the hole there you got the lead comes down and then you've got the lead going under basically going along the bottom of the fuselage there so that way it's no there's no likelihood of it getting entangled in the wires and it just comes up through here and it'll go into the receiver but as you can see, I have it hooked up to the servo tester and it's working perfectly. So what I'll do guys is I will, I will put it, um, 
I'll pause here. I will install the next servo for the left elevator and then we'll continue on with the wings. Okay, so got a bit of progress done. And so what I've done is I have installed the elevator servo. So we've got the right one, we have the left. The wiring is all put um, through. And I have gone ahead and put all, because if you didn't spot in the previous clip as I was filming, uh, none of the wires or plugs were into the receiver. And what I've just done at the moment is I've just gone and hooked everything up. Obviously, I don't have, um, I've got all the plugs into the receiver. However, there's no ailerons connected because we haven't got that far yet. Um, but they do have uh, rudder, elevator, and throttle. So you probably won't see it move, but we've got throttle. We have a rudder and we have elevator. So uh, you can probably see that the trim is off a little bit. Uh, I will tackle that later on as we go as we go through the build. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, I might just even uh, go into sub trims and just adjust it there. Um, but I have the elevators working on their own separate channel. So um, it's a little bit skewed off a little bit. So for instance, I mean, uh, the right elevator is on, I think, channel four and the left elevator is on channel seven. But I mean, it's working the, they have their own uh, channel because um, I would have to then, if I was that could only have it on one channel, I would have to have a Y lead, which is one of these things here. And I would then need a servo reverser. I don't really want to, I, I used the servo reverser years and years ago on a model. Um, I mean, nothing happened, but just, I don't have a lot of faith in it, that's all. Um, so what I'm going to do next, um, so I'm I'm tossing up, I'm trying to determine if I can program flapperons into this. If I can't, I'm just going to use a Y lead for the ailerons. No big deal, really. Um, I have a, a large scale extra. It's the same size as this, that's just on a Y lead for the ailerons. But I'll see if I can program. Um, I'll see if I can program flapperons into this with the radio. If not, I'll just use a Y lead. So what we're going to do now is tackle the uh, ailerons. So get the wings set up. And well, I tell you what, instead of uh, showing it in the progress, I'm just going to do it off camera, and I'll be back. All right, guys, so as you can see, I have actually mounted a wing, the right wing onto the um, aircraft. Now, um, the servo is uh, mounted and connected to the aileron, and it is, that's just the uh, wire there. Now, uh, I have here some tape over a, over a hole a couple of holes here um, I'm going to do my best to repair these um, where I've done uh, some servo repair tape uh, over here over covering some holes I'm going to try my best because the holes kind of go under the uh, cash roll decal here I'm going to try my best to go over it and uh, make it as neat as possible um, but I'll I may just I'm not too sure, but I might just leave the uh, ta clear tape on here. Now, um, one of the things I'm going to show you, uh, so if you're uh, in the building your first airplane and it uh, requires you to have to 
it has like say for instance two servos for the aileron so one servo per wing and you're having a bit of trouble getting the lead through the uh, wing I'm going to show you a little trick so this is something that you can use uh, it can either be some string or a bit of fishing line or in my case I just got a bit of old servo wire that's an off cut and what I've done is as you can see here I have uh, tied it to the end of the servo plug doesn't have to be uh, perfect and what I have here is an old fuel filter that I don't use anymore it's kind of uh, perished away inside um, so I've just got it wrapped around that and then what we'll do is I'll put the camera down here and so we have our wing and it's pretty straightforward I can just get it on make sure it's still on camera so if you're having trouble getting it through uh, through the wing it's just a case of putting the filter, we'll put the weight in first and just jiggle it around and with a little enough jiggling you can see that it is coming out the bottom here and don't pull on it because you don't want to damage the wire from the servo guys it's coming through just a little tip for you is to make things a little bit easier just try and, I'm trying to watch this on the screen and do it at the same time and there it is guys simple as that just a little quick tech tip for you so that makes things easier for when you are putting your servo lead through the wing just a little, either like I said, a little bit of string or fishing line or a little bit of old wire and some, something weight, weighty at the bottom helps it go all the way through. Well guys, I can honestly say it's starting to get towards the end of this build. Um, I'm going to try and make it all in this one video. Um, so as you can see, both wings are on um they're just on they're not really attached um i mean i do have the uh, screws the bolts wing nuts on just to um hold them on but i mean it's not going anywhere anyway um everything electronic wise really is done so we have the so to give you a quick demonstration um, I went through the trims and everything and got it roughly set up. So we have our elevator. We have our rudder. And we also have our ailerons. So all that's left to do now, guys, is to... Uh, install the engine so what I'm going to, going to do is I'm going to do the engine install in sections and walk you through it so as you know I um, if you uh, have already been watching this for a while will know that I bought an RCGF um, 35cc engine and it's uh, right here so so this is the engine that I got it's a 35 stinger engine and as you can see it has four bolts or four uh, mounting um, standoffs that's how they mount on so these go against the motor plate and it screws on from the back now it actually comes in it's actually uh, quite 
I guess you could say handy. Um, when I built my uh, Yak 55, um, I put an OS 35, uh, OS 33 GT engine in. And what I did is I made a motor template um, of a mounting template of these um, with like all these uh, mounting points here. So I'll just quickly put this down here because over here is the mounting template. It does, I know it doesn't look perfect. However, um, I'm trying to do this on the floor here, but so as you can see here, uh, it's got the uh, the four four parts, and um, I mean without the, the screws in, but um, it actually lines up perfectly on the um, RCGF engine. So what I'm going to do is to mount the engine. It's a case of you got to measure the uh, the sections here and measure where it is in the middle because this dot here represents the uh, crankshaft here. So that's what that dot there represents, that crankshaft. So we want to get it in the middle as possible, or as close to the middle as possible as we can. So that way when I put the cowl over it, it's it's not skewed, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause here and start doing some measuring and marking, and I'll be back. All right, so we are getting ready to mount, mount the uh, engine. So what I have done is I have measured uh, top and bottom and side to side to get the middle of the uh, motor plate here. Now you probably can't see it on camera but right where my uh, finger is there I've drilled a small hole. Now the idea of that small hole is so I have here my uh, motor mount template and that will go right in there, if I can find the hole. And I mean, obviously I haven't lined it up properly, but there you go. So that there is how I will have, it's probably gonna fall out in a sec, but that is the uh, motor mounts. I know it probably looks like the holes are off it's just the camera angle and so forth. But as you can see, so now I have um, the middle of the motor plate and now I can then, uh, I will level, make sure this is nice and level uh, and level with the bottom and the top here. And then I will start drilling small pilot holes around and get ready to drill the full size holes for uh, mounting the engine. Okay, so I have done the pilot holes. There's one there, one there, one there, and one there. So what I'm going to do, um, so with this uh, engine, now if we see here, so we have here the choke. So if I flick, so that's your choke, so that's choke off. Obviously, that's choke on. So obviously, I need to also drill a decent enough size hole into the um, motor plate here, not just for the um, choke to move, but also for the fuel tube to come through. Um, once I have, what I'll do is I'll do that hole in the middle last. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to drill the uh, holes, the main holes for the uh, the motor mounting to mount the engine, and we'll continue from there. Whew. Well, that was a fair bit of faffing about. 
I'm glad I didn't do anything like uh, time lapse or just as I went along because this was actually quite a bit of work. Um, unfortunately, some of the carbon fiber wasn't perfectly flat because uh, um, I did the carbon fiber around the motor plate area. It wasn't perfectly flat, so I then had to, uh, with my rotary tool, um, dremel it away so I had bare wood underneath so the engine would sit flat on the plate um, yeah so and now it look you can like you can see where I've had to uh, sand like sand it away with the rotary tool I'll paint over it black just for my own uh, peace of mind I have put the hole here for the fuel tubing uh, fortunately, I didn't have to actually do a big hole because as you can see here There's a nice gap for where the choke uh, butterfly moves So that's good um, So Really guys all that's left to do is Put the uh, throttle cable through and yeah that's it and and the choke lever i'll work something out to have it so it goes around here somewhere but honestly guys that's about it so i'm going to do that off camera and hopefully hopefully fingers crossed it should be finished well guys after a fair bit of faffing about the engine is mounted now i it's been a few days since I did the last little clip before I cut to this one. Uh, so for a bit of clarity, I initially had the uh, included standoff engine mounts and the they were too long. And as I was trying to fit the cowl, I was having to cut out bits of the cowl and, uh, to get it to fit and it was getting to the point where there'd be no, uh, like I'm probably exaggerating, get to the point where there'd be hardly any cowl left. So I've, I had to order some new engine mounts and they're adjustable. So it's done. Essentially the model is completed and here it is right so yeah um it's not there <laughs> so i have it out in my backyard so what we're going to do is we are going to go outside and have a look and here it is guys it is all finished now it is it is finished but it's not complete so a few things i want to point out um i had to uh, do a few modifications to the um, motor plate I am really glad that I reinforced it with carbon fiber because I had to cut a fair bit of it out so I can kind of understand why that the original engine mount was hacked out the way it was however it was hacked out too much so most of the original most of the new motor plate that I put in is still in there but I had to cut a fair bit out to uh, have the be able to have the engine sit back far enough so it doesn't stick out of the cowl too far. Um, I have to do a few little changes to the throttle, uh, the throttle linkage, um, just a few little changes here and there. Um, it's going to be a little while until we get to see it fly, um, partly because. Uh, I was originally going to use my high-tech Aurora 9 to power it however the battery in that radio has decided to go completely dead um, I tried turning it you know the old turn it off and on sort of thing um, yeah it's dead so I've had to order a spectrum receiver and I'm going to be flying it on my spectrum radio uh, a couple of other little things so um, 
I'm going to try and fix this in, uh, in, my, in spare time. Um, patch up a few little things like repaint the cowl here red and so forth because it has it's had a bit of hanger rash um, but other than that guys it is all finished it is all ready to go to a degree so as you can see I've had to even with the originally the as you can see here they've got the timing uh, sensor here so that was sticking out to about here with the cowl all the way back and even still like even I had to buy custom engine mount well not custom there it's called extreme flight engine mounts um, don't know if you can see them in there they but um, they're adjustable so you have an initial length and then it comes with shims so you can add shims or take shims away to move the engine back or forth depending on the model you have so I've put those in and uh, yeah so essentially guys this is it it is completed I just have to do a few little things off camera before I'm ready to do the maiden flight if you have any questions guys don't hesitate to comment I'll do my best to respond to them until then guys enjoy your hobby and cheers